Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So today we are talking about the brand new MacBook Pros. Right here in front of me, I have the M1 Max 14 inch model as well as the M1 Max 16 inch model. These are identical specs built exactly the same. And there's definitely some pros and cons to each. So we're gonna be diving into that quite a bit. Now, if you guys are familiar with my channel or have been following along, I picked up the 14 inch model the day these were released. So I've been using this thing over the past month. I've made a lot of content for my YouTube channel about this machine. And this thing has been a game changer. So definitely check out some of that content, but not only for myself, but also for you guys out there, I wanted to get my hands on a 16 inch model and really kind of test this thing out and see not only, you know, even though Apple says you can get the same exact performance out of both these machines, is that true? Which one do I prefer? And kind of talk about some of the pros and cons of each model, the 14 inch versus the 16 inch. Oh, and you guys won't believe once we get to the performance portion of these two machines, because honestly, I was surprised about the difference between these two. Now, although this video we are going to be talking about the m1 max chip because that's what both of these computers have in them some of this stuff is going to carry over for the m1 pro chip as well so just keep that in mind if you guys want to see a full in-depth video of me talking about should you go for the m1 pro chip versus the m1 max chip let me know down in the comments below and maybe we'll get that video lined up as well so i do think it's really cool that apple allowed you to spec the 14 inch um, the same as the 16 inch. There's obviously just some drawbacks to that or at least some trade-offs. So let's talk about some of those things. So the first big difference between these two models is obviously going to be the battery life. These chips are designed for very heavy, intense users. So you have to keep that in mind when you talk about battery life. You're looking for performance out of your computer, not trying to get the biggest battery life out of it. If you're more concerned about the battery life, you're better off getting something like the M1 Pro chip. The GPU doesn't pull as much power and you're gonna get better battery life with the M1 Pro chip. Now with the M1 Maxes here, obviously the 16 inch MacBook Pro is just quite a bit bigger. So you're going to get better battery life in this model right here. Now, although some people have kind of been hating or trashing on the battery life of the 14 inch model, I actually have a whole video dedicated to talking about the battery life and the fan noise on the 14 inch model right here. So definitely I recommend you guys to check that video out. But in my experience, the battery life on the 14 inch has been honestly pretty solid. I was able to get at least two full hours of very intensive 4K video editing. And then if I threw it in the low power mode, I was able to get to four plus hours. And if I was just doing normal everyday stuff or maybe some light photo editing, I would be able to get even more than that. And then on the 16 inch in my test so far, it's even better than that. So a quick way to sum it up, I think the battery life on both these models are great, um, especially when you're looking for a very, very high performance chip. Both these are gonna be able to do whatever you need and be able to hold you over on a long flight across the country. And honestly, with the quick charging, you can get to like at least half battery in 30 minutes with the quick charge. So the battery life is really not an issue on either one, but you just have to kind of have the trade off on, do you want better battery life in a bigger body or do you want to have a little bit worse of battery life, but you're gonna have that small portable size. Now, the next thing up to kind of go along with that is the actual physical screen size of these two devices, as well as just the overall portability of them. Now, I myself have been a MacBook Pro user going all the way back to like 2008, 2009. And every time I upgrade my MacBook Pro, I would always get a 15 inch model. That's just always what worked with me. I thought it was a good in-between size back when they had even the 17 inch model. If you guys remember that, let me know down in the comments below. But the 15 inch was just kind of the go-to size for creators out there. Now, last year when the first iteration of the M1 MacBook Pros came out, I upgraded my MacBook to that 13 inch model. So I downgraded it in size. And that was the first time I ever had a smaller MacBook. And it definitely was an adjustment to have a smaller screen size, but I fell in love with how portable that machine was. And I just loved just how light it was, how easy it fit in backpacks. And I just kind of forgot about it whenever I was taking it with me. So when Apple announced that the 14 inch model, they were going to allow you to spec it the same as the 16 inch, I thought this was the one for me. I jumped on this right away, fully spec'd it out. And that is why I ordered the 14 inch first. So I decided to get my hands on the 16 inch to test it out for myself, to make sure I made the right decision, but also to test it out for you guys and kind of tell you, you know, the pros and cons of each one and who I think both of these computers are really for. I'm not gonna lie. I thought I was going to hate the size of the 16 inch. I thought it was just going to feel way too big and just way too massive, but honestly, 
it kind of just feels right. It feels normal. And especially coming from the 15 inch MacBook Pro world over the past 10 years, this just kind of feels like what I'm used to. And the 14 inch feels pretty damn small next to it. Over the past two weeks, I myself, I was in Miami for a full week and then LA for a full week. So really I was editing on this 14 inch MacBook Pro. I didn't ever have it hooked up to a monitor like I do at home. And I'm not gonna lie, when I was editing in Premiere Pro on this screen size, it felt really small. It definitely was cluttered. I couldn't see things very well. So although the portability of this is super easy to get around with you know, how small and light it is, the trade-off with that is once you get to your destination and you open up to work on it, the small real estate is kind of a problem, at least to me. Now, maybe if you mostly do stuff that you don't need as much real estate on your screen or wherever you are taking it to, you're going to hook it up to you know multiple monitors or an ultra wide like I have here, then the actual portability of it, your actual travel time with it, the small size of this does make it worth it. But if you can deal with the little extra weight and physical size of the 16 inch model, getting to your destination when you're talking about portability, I think this machine is actually worth it. Because once you get to your destination, you flip this thing open and you start getting to work, the extra real estate and the little extra battery life are really nice things to have. The battery life doesn't matter to me as much, but the screen size is really, really nice. All right, so last but certainly not least, we have to talk about the performance out of these two machines because there definitely are some differences and I was a little surprised. So there's been a lot of talk about the 14 inch with the fans turning on, is it going to throttle faster than the 16 inch, so on and so forth. Although Apple says you can spec them exactly the same, is the bigger machine going to actually have better performance? Here's what I found out with my personal tests, at least with these two computers with the same exact specs. Now, before I tell you the actual numbers, I do wanna note that the M1 Max chip is an absolute game changer for pretty much anyone. So the performance out of either of these two models are honestly unbelievably amazing. So I decided to export a video. It was a nine minute video that is in 4K in Premiere Pro, so it's not as optimized as Final Cut, which is just another thing working against us, so it should be harder for these machines to you know, export. And I'm talking a video with multiple 4K streams of video in a codec that is not easy for your computer to handle. I had motion graphics on there, I had effects, so on and so forth, so it's definitely a pretty intensive video. On the 14 inch model, we have an export time of three minutes and 41 seconds, which that's insane. I mean, a nine minute video being exported in under half the time, that's just wild. Um, so 341 on the 14 inch, and then on the 16 inch, we have three minutes and 13 seconds. So the 16 inch was quite a bit faster, but here's something that actually really surprised me because a lot of people I know, other YouTubers, people on Twitter, whatever, have said they've never heard the fans kick on on the 16 inch model. So here's the thing, on the 16 inch model, one minute into the export, the fans turned on on this machine, and I mean, they were pretty loud, like not as loud as the previous models of MacBook Pro, like the other 16 inches, those were just crazy loud, but I was surprised. They were definitely louder than any fans I've ever heard on the 14 inch that I've been using this for the past month. Now the fans turned on on the 14 inch about two minutes into the export and they definitely were significantly quieter. Now before you freak out about the 16 inch having fan noise on it, I do wanna mention that the 16 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro has three different performance modes. It has a high power mode, an automatic mode, and a low power mode. The 14 inch model only has one thing you can select. It has a low power mode, and you can either turn that on or off. Now the high power mode on the 16 inch model basically allows this computer to push it to the limit. So it's going to allow it to have the fans kick on. It's going to kind of put all of its power to the GPU and really, you know, have this thing go into a high power mode. So since this computer was in automatic, I think it just made it kick into high power mode when I was exporting and that's why the fans became so loud and I should mention that once the export was done uh, the fans turned off very quickly on both these machines so within like a minute after the export the fans were back to completely silent so I don't think that's a completely fair assessment because the high power mode is only on the 16 inch model and there's not a high power mode on the 14 inch model so there's really only one mode that they both have in common and that is the low power mode which honestly I have used a good amount on the 14 inch just to give my a longer battery life if I'm not doing anything crazy on my computer. But I decided to do the test of the exports with the same exact video again, with both computers being in the low power mode. So for the low power exports on the 14 inch model, we have six minutes and 42 seconds. And then on the 16 inch model, we have four minutes and 51 seconds. And both computers were completely silent. I did not hear a fan come on 
at all on either machine. And I mean, I put my ear literally to the computers and heard nothing. But I think it's safe to say between, you know, just doing a normal export and then the low power mode exports, even though these computers are spec exactly the same, you're gonna get a little bit better performance out of the 16 inch MacBook Pro. And I think that's just because the physical size of it and just its overall capability of it. So that kind of brings us to which size should you go with? Should you go for the 14 inch model or should you go for the 16 inch model? So I don't really think there's a clear winner. I think it's kind of a trade off like I was talking about before. The 14 inch model is awesome because it's so small and physically portable. But once I get to my destination, I wish I had the screen size of the 16 inch model. So if you're someone that is just, you know, going between an office and home all the time, maybe the 14 inch model is good for you. You plug it in at home, you plug it in at work and sometimes work on this computer here. But if you're someone that does actually travel quite a bit or on the go a bit and you need to use the screen real estate on this machine very often, I think the 16 inch model makes total sense. Or maybe you're someone that just always wants to go all out, get the biggest and baddest thing. Trust me, I kind of understand that world. That's how I am a lot of the time, it's just being honest. Um, the 16 inch model might be the right choice for you as well. You're gonna get a little bit better performance. You're gonna get a little bit better of a battery life. If you don't mind having a little bit of extra weight, honestly, the weight doesn't make a difference to me. It's just kind of the physical size. It is a big machine, but for me, I think for a lot of people, the trade-off is gonna be worth it. So guys, let me know down in the comments below what your guys' thoughts are of the 14 inch versus the 16 inch. What do you guys think I should do? What do you think other people should do out there? I myself am still a little bit on the fence. I've been using the 14 inch for the past month and I love that thing. But now that I have the 16 inch in front of me and I've been using it for a few days, I really do love the size of this. So I'm gonna push this thing to its limits over the next week before I make my decision and definitely stay tuned to the channel because I will for sure be making some content based about which decision I made for myself. And maybe that'll help your guys' decision out even a little bit as well. But guys, that's gonna be it for me in today's video. I hope you enjoyed watching or at least you found it helpful. If you did enjoy it, will you please drop this video a thumbs up. If you're new around here, consider subscribing it helps out me and the channel more than you can even imagine. You guys don't want to miss any future uploads. But guys, I'm out for now. I'll catch you in the next video very, very soon. Peace, guys.